G'day and welcome to Condensed Popcorn. In this video, I'll be recapping the Polish science fiction slash comedy film Sex Missia, which translates to Sex Mission. The film starts with a siren sounding as a helicopter is landing at an airport. The next scene is a press conference where our heroes Max and Albert are being interviewed alongside Professor Kupelweiser. She states it's a big day for humanity and science as they are about to partake in a groundbreaking experiment where they will spend three years in hypersleep. The professor has successfully completed the experiment with a chimpanzee. This will be the first human trial. Our two heroes are formally introduced. We see Albert explain his noble motives for volunteering for the experiment. While watching from home is his whole extended family. Drinks in hand, they are extremely proud. Max takes the microphone and says his reasons are because he's always been attracted to danger. We see a woman holding a knife watching from home who suggests he's just doing it for the money. She is clearly his wife and she doesn't buy his story one bit. The interviewer attempts to humble Max and asking, is he not afraid? She tells him of the dangers which they don't seem to be considering. The professor also agrees that there's a lot that could complicate the experiment. Finally, she wishes them luck then ends the interview. Max and Albert descend in an elevator and enter a lab where they are prepped for their hibernation. Max seems to be quite relaxed, while Albert is very focused and concerned. Max asks one of the scientists, hey, what's that over there? The scientist falls for it, and when he turns, Max smuggles a hip flask and a few cigarettes out from his shorts. Their chambers are closed and sealed away. We see the timer start from zero and a heartbeat monitor begin to flatline. Albert wakes up crying, I can't see. The four female doctors above him say, that's normal. Is it over, he asks. Yes, they respond. Max also asks, is it over? He smugly adds, told you so. But then he is quickly brought down a peg by his own revelation that he can't see, crying out, I see darkness, darkness, only darkness. The next shot, we see them waking in their chamber. They say they are sweating like pigs, which they shrug off as side effects. Enter three young, good looking women with their breakfast. Good morning, Max flirts. I haven't eaten in three years, he jokes. The girls do not even let out a slight smirk. When Max goes to take a bite, he makes a look of disappointment. Ah, uh, excuse me, this is stale. He taps on it, showing that it's rock hard. The ladies then come over and unscrew the food. When they eat the food, they complain it has no taste, to which the guard responds, saying it's a diet to help them adapt. This makes sense to Max. All of a sudden, Max is craving a smoke and he remembers his stash, which he retrieves. Whilst this is happening, we are first introduced to Dr. Lamia, who watches over them on a security screen. A warning goes off from the smoke and they have to refer to the computer for information on what they are smoking. The screen tells them that it's a substance called tobacco, which went extinct in 1996. They aren't in Kansas anymore. The guards worried that it might start a fire enter promptly with fire extinguishers. When Dr. Lamia enters, Max demands to know where Professor Kuppelweiser is. She tells him in response that he does not exist. She tells them that they should be happy they were unfrozen, further adding that there were more important things to worry about than them, such as the war. What war? They say. Angry Max further adds, we were promised we would be awoken regardless of any political situation. At this point, Dr. Berner enters, who is responsible for the whole division, and she also concurs that Dr. Lamy is correct. Max insists that he wants to speak to the leader of the facility. The lady says, I'm listening. Max further clarifies that he'd rather speak with the male. This is when they tell them that that isn't possible, that there are no other males in existence. Men have long been extinct. Max scoffs, extinct, we're not mammoths. They inquire about what the date is and find out that they've been asleep a lot longer than planned. An extra 50 years, in fact. Max getting a little bit suspicious, thinking, hmm, there are no men, the year is 2044. Albert says, these must be the hallucinations the professor warned of. They try to leave immediately, but are electrocuted by the door. The two are very much in shock and try to rationalize this as some part of the experiment. Max wonders, how would it even be possible to breed without men? At this point, a voice over the microphone answers his question, explaining the technique is called parthenogenesis. Max at first responds casually to the voice, but then protests against the invasion of his privacy. Dr. Lamia then says, it's time to sleep and turns off their lights. The next scene, we're introduced to Dr. Tekla from the genetics division. She insinuates that she's aware of their discovery and hopes Dr. Lamia will be willing to share information. She tries to bribe her with some jam and a gig at genetics. Lamia plays dumb and says, she doesn't know what she's talking about. We next see Max looking around the room for any weaknesses. Then all of a sudden, the TV turns on. On the screen are school children reciting the way that life is created in this society. Albert translates what they're saying into layman's terms and it ruins Max's appetite. We then see Berna tell Lamia to be careful and that she needs to keep her contact with the men to a minimum. As she watches on the screen, she marks down her observations 
We then hear a notification come through her speakers and it tells her to take her pill. She does so, routinely. Max can't sleep as it's gotten quite cold all of a sudden. Albert says he can double up. At this moment they come to terms with the tragic reality that the world they knew is gone, along with their family and friends. When Lamia enters next to check on them, Max turns on the charm. He makes some moves and plants a peck on Lamia. She warns him that it's unhygienic and if he tries it again, he will be restrained. He then warns her he is a boxer. She then flips him on his back with ease. After she leaves, when Albert comes to console Max, he remarks that it works. We next see Lamia enter the hallway flustered. She seems to be experiencing something she has never felt. Her colleagues check if she's okay and she insists it's nothing. Later, she returns with the guards and offers the men uniforms to wear as it's time for them to leave their cell. They attach earrings on them. Max complains, please don't make us gay, but they are told they are necessary if you wish to travel throughout the facility. The two are then put to wait inside a bio sanctuary. Inside is a sort of museum with extinct plants and taxidermed creatures that appear to be nuclear hybrids. They see a tree with two apples. Max takes one. Out to a woman who is cycling in front of the screen of a forest. She is the supreme excellency. She is brought to see them as royal music plays. Max tries to formally introduce himself but is tackled as he gets too close. He composes himself and asks together with Albert the question that is burning away. What have they done with all the men? The Excellency's right hand lady explains to them that they didn't do anything that it was in fact Professor Kuppelweiser who during the war created a chemical that was meant to suppress male genes but instead destroyed them. Max then realizes this might be a good time to negotiate payment for his 50 years overtime and says he will happily take on the work of repopulating the world with men as much as they can handle. The Excellency isn't surprised that they would want the world to return to its old ways. She begins to tell them of an anecdote of how the apple tree behind her is the last of its kind, and was the same one that man first used as a way to tempt woman. Because of this, we lost paradise. She then realizes the apples were eaten by the men. Furious, she demands they be taken away. They then throw them back in the cell. Max's spirit is finally broken. Albert is convinced they need to escape. No longer optimistic, Max becomes hysterical. Enter the guards with a Dyson. As they back away against a wall, Albert notices an exposed cable and has an idea. Meanwhile, Dr. Lamia is in her room and seems to be discovering her femininity. She then takes her pill as prompted, but can't stop thinking about Max. At this point, Dr. Lamia embarks on a mission to find out more. She goes to the area where the elderly are housed. She seeks to speak to the oldest resident. When she enters the room, the senior lady seems to know how to play ball and doesn't want any trouble. The guards listen in from downstairs until Dr. Lamia blocks their surveillance. Lamia then offers her the jam in exchange for some information. The elderly lady first tests the quality of the jam and then she agrees to talk. Dr. Lamia asks, what were men used for? Lamia admits she finds them very distracting. The old lady detects that she has fallen in love. Lamia tells the lady that the plan is to naturalize them, which means turning them into women. The lady insists that if she was young, she would do everything in her power to save them. Back to the lads, when the guards open the door, Albert damages the wires, causing the system to short circuit. When the security team reboot the power, it causes a big outage. They use this as an opportunity to escape. They hide an event that's being serviced. Whilst hiding, they can see into a classroom that's been taught to a group of young cadets. They then fall through the vent and are caught and return back to their cells. Lamia enters with Berna and tells them to sign a document admitting that they were born males against their will and that they were perverted by male civilization and furthermore that they agree that men don't and never did exist. Then they will be forgiven. They refuse and continue to play chess. At this moment the roof of their cell opens and it is revealed that there is a whole theater watching down over them. They try to flee, but they are forced to sit. The crowd applauds as Her Excellency enters. The hearing begins with Dr. Berner saying that she and her team have the most information and will wait to speak last. Next to speak is Dr. Tekla, who isn't a fan and insists there is no reason for any trial. From her point of view, it's crystal clear that we must follow our mother's footsteps and that men cannot be allowed to exist. At this point, Albert fights back, insisting that there have been so many great men throughout history naming Copernicus and Einstein, which ladies from the assembly retort that they were both women. The lady then goes on to argue that all bad things in existence were brought on by men. Albert then tells them that women in their time were praised and showered with love and flowers and were the inspiration of art and all things great. They refuse to listen and say that it's all lies and provocation. Before they are removed, Max says they've all gone crazy because they've never had a man. 
Whilst waiting in the hallway, Max congratulates Albert on his speech. They then notice the ritual of the staff ingesting their pills. After a vote concludes, the council decides that they are to be turned into women. Tekla, very unhappy with the decisions, objects and says that they should be killed. Whilst they are being guarded, Max seizes an opportunity when one of them falls asleep. He lunges forward and kisses the guard. This causes her to faint. When the other awakes, she gets knocked back out, sideshow Bob style. The alarm is raised. Whilst in the elevator, a woman enters and begins undressing, assuming they are fellow sisters. She asks why they are staring, saying she's only four pounds overweight. The elevator opens and Max runs out in excitement when he sees a pool filled with naked women swimming. Albert snaps him out of his trance, reminding him where they are. They then pass through what appears to be a hatchery. It's clear this is how they are born. Dr. Lamia manages to track them using their earrings. She then says that she will help them see the surface. She takes them to a periscope. When they look through it, they see that the surface is a barren wasteland. She explains that the surface is filled with radiation as a side effect from the professor's M-bombs. She says the only way to walk the surface is with suits. At that moment, to Max and Albert's surprise, she opens a door letting the guards in. They are then taken away to the genetics department and Dr. Tekla tells Lamia that she will be overseeing the men from now. It is assumed Lamia was hoping for some sort of pay rise and on the spot realizes that she was used. They are told that they will be killed and their organs will be used for transplants and what is left of them will be used for experiments to turn them into protein. We next see a masked doctor come in. It's Lamia. She gestures to Max to be quiet and proceeds to untie him. Next, they kill the lights and grab Albert, then the three of them flee to an elevator. At this point, they remove their tracking devices. Ouch. When they return to the periscope room, Lamia tricks the guards to let her back in. She then threatens to blow everyone up by pulling on a hatch and commands the ladies to give the men their clothes and their suits. Max and Albert quickly get inside the oxygen suits. Hot in the heels, the genetics teams are attempting to break down the door as fast as they can. They get into the exit elevator, but they can't activate it not without a password. The guards refuse to give it despite being threatened. Then in a moment of desperation, Max cries out the famous Polish profanity, Kurva, which just so happens to be the password. The guards are shocked, unaware of the meaning. When the men get to the surface, it is revealed that Lamia at the last minute decided to join them. As they look around, everything is red with steam emitting from the ground. They go to explore further, but then Max bounces into a wall. Then with the knife he pulls out from his suit, he cuts at the wall, revealing that the outside world is not destroyed after all. They are in fact on a beach. Lamia assumes it must be a radiation filter. Only one member from the genetics team is able to come up in pursuit, as there are not enough suits. We then see the three enter a forest. As their suits begin to run out of oxygen, we see them suffering. Their death seems imminent. Then Max starts cheering in joy. He pulls off his mask. Albert begs him to put it back on. At that point, he says, we are saved, pointing towards a bird. If it can breathe, so can we. Albert takes off his mask as well, and then they convince Lamia to remove hers. We then see them arrive at a wall. When they climb over, it seems to be a regular home, untouched, no signs of war. Without hesitation, Max prepares a nice big breakfast. Lamia has never seen anything like it. Whilst they are enjoying their victory meal, they are interrupted by the pursuing scientist who runs out of air just as she arrives. Albert commences CPR on her. He goes to take her inside to further give her aid, insisting it's just first aid. When she wakes, she's hysterical and wants to go back. Amongst the chaos, she slips and sits on a remote, turning on the TV. We then see Dr. Berner and other high members of the organization speaking, covering up their escape. The scientist, whose name is revealed to be Emma, is in shock and she can't believe what's going on. Albert consoles her, which causes her to repel at first, but then she is taken aback and seems to want more. Meanwhile, Max and Lavia go upstairs. He shyly proposes that they should get intimate. We then cut to a scene later when it's assumed the deed was done. The lads relax downstairs while the girls have a bath. All of a sudden, they are interrupted by the sound of an elevator. We see the Excellency exit. It is clear this is her home. When she realizes something is out of place and goes around to further inspect, Max and Albert spring out and begin to fight her. Amongst the ruckus, it is revealed that she is not a woman, and in fact, a man. He reveals that after the war, when the League of Women took over, they were naturalizing all men who survived. His mother protected him and disguised him as a woman. He later joined the League as an activist and was eventually promoted all the way to the top. And at that moment, when he had the power, he set up this home. 
He says the radiation was much weaker than expected, but by the time they were all set up underground, it was just easier to continue to rule over them there. He says that the pills were used to take away their sex drive and make them more focused on work. In exchange for his secrets being kept, he says that he will allow the men to live in his home and, of course, their new girlfriends. The next scene is back inside the hatchery, where we see Albert and Max both disguised as women. They are on a mission to contaminate all the test tubes with male genes. Nine months later, we see nurses routinely wrapping all the newborns, and in the final shot, the nurse screams when she sees that one of the babies is a male. And that's the end of the movie. Now go buy the DVD, you tight asses. <laughs>